Well, the coronavirus pandemic has um, caused us all a great deal of panic and anxiety. For us in the church, though, we, we see it, uh, okay, we, can, we want to come to our churches, but we can't, so we'll go online or we'll uh, we talk to each other, telephone each other as best we can to spread the word of God. But I'd like to introduce you now to a wonderful resource which our youth ministry here in the Archdiocese is uh, putting together. It's called Encounter. Now, that's a very, very significant word. Perhaps uh, we could say that of all the religions, Christianity is the encounter religion, the encounter between Jesus, the Son of God, and you and I, all of us as brothers and sisters in Christ. So as we approach Easter now, we are going to present to you over the next 12 sessions, uh, the walking with the Lord in the last moments of his life, traditionally called the Stations of the Cross. We hope to encounter Jesus afresh in the moments, in the days, the moments, the minutes, the hours before his death, and then of course knowing that the third day he will rise again. Our young people will give testimonies about the, their own personal walking with the Lord. Uh, also, there will be scripture text and a time for reflectiveness as we uh, allow Jesus to take us to the place which is bewildering and painful and on uh, one level seems to be uh, the, the place we want to run away from. And that's the Calvary Cross. But then, of course, we know that this is the place of salvation, ultimately of joy, ultimately of hope, ultimately of peace. And from the blood and water flowing from the side of Jesus on the Calvary Cross comes the church, the water representing the baptism and the blood representing the Eucharist, the primal sacraments of our church. So I do ask you to enter into this. Don't look at this as if it's an entertainment uh, session. Don't look at it as if it's just graphics and it's not a nice colour. And didn't, didn't that person talk well? No, I want to go deeper than that. I want uh, our testimonies, our, our scripture texts, our reflections, our silences to lead us to a deeper encounter with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And for us to do that particularly, we need the presence of Mary, the mother of God, who walked with Jesus, one of the very few that walked with Jesus on these last moments of his life. Let's allow G Mary to walk with us to Jesus, her son. So may God bless you. May he fill you with love and peace through this wonderful encounter led by our young people. And may all of us share this resource far and wide so that all of us in this incredibly difficult time of the virus can at least encounter Jesus in the new modes of communication, particularly now presented to you. God bless you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The way of the cross is a journey of the most beloved Son in complete obedience to the Father, who pours out his Spirit upon us. The journey of Jesus is also a journey of any of his followers. It is our journey. We follow the Son carrying our daily crosses, the temptations, the scandals, the weakness, the sickness, our rebelliousness, and also our helplessness. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is also with us on this journey. See in her eyes the beauty of obedience and the trust she has in our Lord. This journey is a journey of encounters, an encounter of God, an encounter with one another. As we explore the 12 encounters of Jesus on his way to Calvary, explore how you too are being called to an encounter this Easter. G'day, I'm Christopher and I'm a youth minister here in the Canberra Goulburn Archdiocese. Uh, when I was about 17, I had this experience of this retreat where I came to know Jesus in person for the first time. It's this, this weird, might sound weird, but uh, I think before, before that experience, my idea of God was this idea that God was distant, he was disinterested, and that I was here and it was just me hanging out, doing my thing. But when I had this encounter experience with Jesus and I came to know Jesus personally for the first time, I learned that I could have this relationship with him. And it changed everything. It started to change the way that I lived my day-to-day -day life and the way I saw myself and other people. And I started to express this in ways that uh, meant something to me at the time. I would jump on the bus. I would, I'll be on the bus for an hour and a half in the morning on my way to school. It was a long bus trip. But I'd stick in my, my earphones and listen to my Christian music 
that I'd just that, that I just like heard for the first time in this retreat. And I'd start to just pray and I'd talk to Jesus like a friend the whole way. Um, this other weird thing that I would do at school just to, um, again, make Jesus real in my life was this practical way that I did it was I would actually pull up an extra chair in my friendship group and, uh, and I would invite Jesus to sit in that chair. They didn't know, my friends didn't know what was happening, but, but I knew it in, in my heart and I knew Jesus was there with me. So I started to live Jesus in my everyday life. Um, I started to try and imitate Christ in everything I did. And, and, but what this also did was it started to open up doors. Uh, I, would, I was invited to come and help be a leader in my youth group. And I also started to volunteer at these retreats and uh, at, at the same retreat as well that I, uh, that I had my conversion experience. Because what happened was, was when I had my conversion, I came to know a person. That person was Jesus. And then I felt like all I needed to do was make him known. And it's, it's like, it's a simple and beautiful call that we're all called to. And so, and we saw, we see in the stations of the cross, people were having all these different encounters with Jesus. And then what they did after that was they went out and they went and made him known. They went and spoke about him. And I suppose he, Jesus does that to us in our lives today. He encounters us and then he says, go and talk about me, you know? And, uh, and but, you know, we do this the best by the way we love. And so I invite you guys to just go out and love and, and get to know who Jesus is by, by loving his people as well. Um, and then also try and work on that personal relationship that you have with Jesus as well and start to work on that friendship with him and do what you can to make that real for you. God bless, keep it real. They went to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here whilst I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He prayed, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus is deeply distressed and agitated. The mental and physical agony ahead of him haunts him. He can see the shadow of the cross grow in front of him. Fear is looming. So he falls into the trust of the Father's love for him. When joy is doing the Father's will, even the cross can become a song of praise, a song of a son gazing towards a loving Father. They both have one thing in mind, you and me. Jesus, there are times I find it hard to answer the call you have placed in my life. Help me to focus on the love of the Father in the same way that you did. When I am weak, make me strong. Amen. Jesus, you are my strength. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you are my hope. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you are my joy. Lord, have mercy. Immediately, whilst he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. The kiss is a sign of intimacy, a sign of peace, a sign of love. It is now reduced into the sign of betrayal. Judas is determined. He will go to any length to get what he wants. Reflect on your life, your relationships, friendships, loyalty and commitment. Are they about you and what you can get out of them? Or are they about the Lord? 
Jesus, there are times when I have breached the trust of others. Forgive me, Lord, in your mercy for the times that I have fallen short. Give me the grace to see you in those around me. Amen. Jesus, you heard the call of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you are loyal to the Father. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you reconciled me with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard and a maid came up to him and she said, you also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the porch, another maid saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. Peter denied the love of Jesus. In a moment, the encounters he had throughout his journey were cast aside. Did Peter forget? Was it fear? Was it doubt? Have we cast aside our own moments of encounter? May this time be a new moment where we open our lives to the unconditional love of Jesus. Jesus, I open my life to your love. I know there are times when I fail to recognise you, stand up for you and represent you to our world. For these times, I am sorry. May your grace be at work in my weakness. Amen. Jesus, forgive me the times I have turned away. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, welcome me back into your arms. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, use my weakness to be your strength. Lord, have mercy. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. It was under pressure. He tried to distance himself from his actions, washing his hands of them. Reflect on your world. Do you use your power and position for peace? Or do you succumb to the pressures of society? Jesus, your silence before Pilate was to break the circle of violence and to strip the powerful down to show their shallow hearts. We entreat to you, do not delay, Lord, in bringing justice and peace to an ever more troubled world. Jesus, I live in a troubled world in need of you. Bring peace to those in trouble. Bring strength to those who are weak. Bring compassion to those in power. Amen. Jesus, show me how to love like you. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, teach me to follow you. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, lead me to faith, hope and love. Lord, have mercy. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. 
Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. The cross is a symbol of being between heaven and earth. They tried to stop Jesus from belonging to either, yet through him we can belong to both. Jesus embraced the cross forced on him, representing the rejection and isolation of humanity caused by sin. Do you invite Jesus into your rejection and isolation? Jesus, you have healed me from my sin. May I never forget the sacrifice you made for me on the cross. Take me deeper into the mystery of your cross. May I experience its power to transform my life. Amen. Jesus, you carry the cross of rejection and isolation. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you never walk away from suffering. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, help me to carry my cross. Lord, have mercy. Simeon said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign of contradiction, that thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also. His mother kept all these things in her heart. Jesus encounters his mother. Mary encounters her son. Do you think Mary could have imagined what her life was to look like when she professed that she is the handmaid of the Lord and let it be done to me according to thy word? Reflect on your own life. It might not look like what you had imagined, but every day remains an opportunity to encounter Jesus wherever you might be. Mary, mother of sorrows, you shared in the sufferings of your son. You walked this journey with him, being the face of compassion and love. Help me to accept my sufferings in the light of Jesus' passion and death. Amen. Jesus, you are humble and kind. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you show me the love of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, guide me to a life of love. Lord, have mercy. They compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Simon of Cyrene was an ordinary man. He was an onlooker, seeing what was happening around him. Then all of a sudden, he is forced to carry the cross of Christ. He is thrust into a closeness with Christ. Reflect on what he would have experienced, seeing into the eyes of Jesus, embracing the cross as if it were his own. Are you open to an unexpected encounter with Christ? Are you ready to embrace the hopes and the challenges of life, knowing Jesus is there with you? Jesus, you command me to love. I pray that I can be a source of love to those around me, that in times of joy and in times of sadness, I can come to know that you are there with me. Help me to see you and my brothers and sisters and to serve them as if I were serving you. Amen. Jesus, you suffered for my sake. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you carry my burdens with me. Christ, have mercy. 
Jesus, you teach me to love others as you have loved me. Lord, have mercy. He had no form or majesty we should look at him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others. A man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him of no account. It is Christian tradition that has handed down the story of Jesus' encounter with Veronica. She loved Jesus. She followed Jesus. She accompanied Jesus. She wanted to be the one who carried Jesus' cross, even though she would not be able to physically. In her, we see a love that knows no barriers, that throws herself into any situation for the sake of whom she loves. Reflect on whether you desire Jesus like Veronica. Are there areas of your life that stop you from an encounter with him? Or are you ready for the moment of encounter with him? Jesus, what can I offer you? You gift me a love that I can neither imagine nor understand. I desire to encounter you. I desire to have a relationship with you. I desire to follow you wherever you may lead me. Imprint your sacred image on my heart that I may never forget the face of love. Amen. Jesus, you were hurt yet radiant with glory. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you were physically distant yet spiritually close. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you were oppressed yet made humanity free. Lord, have mercy. A great number of people followed him. And among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and he said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never gave suck. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? By compassion, weep over their suffering Saviour. But Jesus asks them to weep over their own sins. From the very beginning of his public ministry, Jesus preached repentance. His journey to Calvary is also a journey of conversion. It cuts through our hearts, brings life out of death. Reflect on how you have distanced yourself from God. Are you ready to encounter the forgiveness, mercy and compassion of a resurrected Christ? Lord Jesus, I see you on the cross. I hear your voice from the Gospels. I meet you at the altar. Give me the grace that I may not harden my heart, but lead me to the way of everlasting life. Amen. Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. They offered him wine to drink mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments amongst them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. Jesus is stripped of all his possessions, including his clothes. He is reduced to nothing. 
It must have been agonising, both physically and mentally, to be stripped. This moment reminds us of the shame that Adam and Eve experienced when they fell from grace. Here, on Golgotha, the new Adam is embracing once and for all the nakedness and shame caused by our sins. Reflect on Jesus becoming the fallen one in order to clothe us with grace, the grace of God's unconditional love. Lord Jesus, you followed the will of the Father with obedience and sincerity. There are times in my life when I clothe myself with what others want. Jesus, strip me of my pretenses. Help me to be a person of integrity, honesty and love. Teach me to be humble before you. Amen. Jesus, you reconciled me with God. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you healed the wounds of my sin. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you intercede for me with the Father. Lord, have mercy. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. When the centurion who stood facing him saw that he had thus breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. Jesus is the beloved Son. On the cross, Jesus embraces the world. In his beloved Son's death, the Father too embraces the whole world. A Trinitarian love story culminates here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Reflect on how you can open yourself to the love of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, your heart is broken and open for me. In your death, I see the depth of your love. You gave your life so that I may have life in abundance. You died in order to raise humanity from sin. Amen. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God's love was revealed amongst us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. These encounters on Jesus' way of the cross are our encounters. Throughout all he experienced, he held you in his heart. In his pain, in all his rejection, in all his loneliness and in all his helplessness, he thought about you. He did it for you. He died for you. Reflect on the way of the cross. If you encountered Jesus today, what would be the one thing that you would say to him? Jesus, I can see your pierced heart from which the water and blood flows. I seek you today asking for an embrace from your cross. I ask you to forgive me. I open my heart to an encounter with your love and live in the hope of everlasting life with you. Amen. 
Jesus, you forgive me. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you heal me. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you love me. Lord, have mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, I desire to encounter you today. Bring from within me an encounter with you in prayer, an encounter with you in Scripture, an encounter with you in the Eucharist, an encounter with you in the Church. I open my life to do your will, to spread the gospel news of the Kingdom, and to thirst for the salvation of all. Draw me into an encounter with you, so that embracing your cross, I may become a person of love, now and forever. Amen. Hi everyone, my name is Teresa, and I just want to share with you my story of a personal encounter with Jesus. So I was raised in a loving Catholic family with my mum, my dad, my sisters and my brother, and I grew up going to Catholic schools, making my sacraments, um, my faith was a really big part of my life. And from a young age, I always liked to talk to God, pray to Him, um, especially when I was scared maybe at night. Often I'd have really bad nightmares, so I loved to talk to God and that helped me get through those things. Um, but as I got older, uh, when I went to high school, I started to sort of fall away from all of that. I stopped praying to God at night. I stopped talking to Him like He was my friend and I started focusing a lot on what other people thought of me. So my friends, people at school, my teachers, I was really trying to do well at school. Um, and at the same time, I really wanted my parents to be proud of me as well. And I was really sad that I'd lost that relationship with God, but I didn't really know what had happened. I kind of just felt like he wasn't really there anymore. But I started getting really, really caught up in, as I said, what other people thought of me. So I started making choices that were more about what my friends wanted to do than what I wanted to do. Um, and I started doing things that really didn't reflect the person that I wanted to be. So I started doing things like gossiping about other people, or being mean behind people's backs and um, things like that, that really weren't kind, they hurt other people and I didn't realize, but they were hurting me as well. And they were hurting my family. And one day, my parents found out about some of these choices that I'd been making, and they were very disappointed in me. I got in a lot of trouble. And this was just one of the worst times that I think I'd felt in my life so far. I felt so, so guilty um, for what had happened, for those choices that I'd made. I realized just how much they'd hurt other people and myself. And I didn't know how to move forward or what to do. I just felt so awful inside myself. And this lasted for weeks, maybe even months. And I had this feeling inside that was sort of, felt like it was eating me away. It was really hurting me. And one day I was at home and I made another choice that I felt like was the wrong thing to do. And suddenly all this guilt just overwhelmed me and I felt so bad. I was having um, a bit of a panic attack in a way. So I was really upset and I decided to open my Bible for the first time in quite a long time. So I opened the family Bible that we had at home up and the page that I opened it to seemed to speak right to me into exactly what I was feeling at that moment. It was from a part of the Bible called Hosea, which I didn't even know that that existed before that day. Um, but I read those words and it was like God was speaking to me. And all of a sudden, I felt so loved. I felt God's presence right there with me. And I really encountered him in a way that I hadn't in my whole life before then. It was in that moment of complete loneliness um, and guilt that I suddenly felt so loved and so forgiven. And that really allowed me to take a new step in my journey of faith with God. So from that day, I realized that my relationship with God was the most important thing in my life. And what other people thought of me, my friends, everyone else, really was just not important compared to this amazing gift that I'd encountered in Jesus. And so from that day forward, I started to base all the decisions I made around 
that encounter with Jesus. So if there's one thing that I can really encourage you to do this Easter, it's to really open yourself up to that encounter with Jesus, to open yourself up to his incredible love and that gift that he gave to us um, on the cross and in rising from the dead. Um, because those encounters, they can change your life. They can lead you to places that you would never expect to go. And so I just invite you to open yourself up to that and to see where that encounter might take you.